Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. We did. Very packed, very busy, but very blessed, and we have so much to be thankful for. So, today I want to talk about fruitfulness. Last week we talked about delighting in the fruitfulness of the Christian home, and the antithesis that Christian, the Christian view of the household presents to the standard worldly American view of the household, where our world sees at best a cute, quaint means of self-satisfaction and at worst just a pain and a source of misery. The Christian view is that the household is a place of great fruitfulness and joy and delight and seeing God keep his promises and bring harvests over the course of a lifetime and even over the course of generations. So this week, I want to talk about fruitfulness in other areas and in other ways. Because while we should glory in the fruitfulness of the household, that's not the full extent of what, of of the opportunities for fruit. I mean, when I say of the household, I'm talking specifically about children. That's not the full or only extent of what God, how, calls, how God calls Christians to bear fruit. So on the one hand, it's, it's a topic where some people seem to, um, they seem to want to brand such discussions as idolatry of the family or idolatry of the household. You can't really glory in that. You need to stop and, and put in a bunch of caveats. And I don't think scripture bears that out. I think we see Psalms over and over and over again about the glories of the Christian household and we should glory in it too. And it's hard to glory in things if you're tripping over all the caveats you're trying to make about the things. At the same time, we do want to just pursue a full and well-rounded biblical understanding of, of any and every topic. And so, let's look at some other ways that God calls Christians to bear fruit. First of all, perhaps primarily, Christians are called to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We see this in the book of Galatians. Five twenty two through twenty three, where we have the fruits of the Spirit listed for us. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So if you're taking notes, number one, when we're talking about bearing fruit as a Christian, that happens when we're bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And what are the fruits of the Spirit? Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So as believers, we would, be, we would be wise to start here. If you look at someone that's bearing these fruits, that's a good sign. That's what God tells us right here. This is what happens if the seed of the word has been planted in the heart of someone by the Holy Spirit and is growing up and producing the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the proper fruits of the word, we're going to see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So any other fruits that we want to pursue should not be pursued to the detriment of or the exclusion of these. These are foundational to the Christian life. And someone who is abounding in these fruits but maybe doesn't check some of the peripheral, oh, it'd be great if they were doing these things. Well, this is, this is square one. So it's a good... It's a good list to check ourselves against. Am I bearing the fruit of the Spirit? If I'm not bearing the fruit of the Spirit, but I'm wrapped up in trying to bear some other fruit somewhere else, I, I'm trying to build a multi-generational legacy for the kingdom of God. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm angry, and I'm bitter, and I'm quick to quarrel, and I'm greedy, and I'm selfish. Okay, well, I'm getting the cart before the horse. Because if the Spirit is not abiding in me and bearing fruit in me, then I'm working on my own strength and I may as well just hang it up and go home. This is square one. 
a, a true walk with Christ, a true knowledge of Christ where the Holy Spirit is dwelling in our hearts and bearing fruit in our lives. So that's square one. We shouldn't be all wrapped up in producing fruits if we haven't gotten to a place where the Holy Spirit is producing fruits in us first. So that's number one. When it comes to Christians bearing fruit, that's the fruit we want to see, first and foremost, the fruit of a true and new life in Christ. We don't want to see a bunch of dead people that are out there following a bunch of self-improvement steps and building a bunch of nice-looking households that are affecting cultural change and they don't know Christ. That's, that's, an, that's a fool's errand. And that's where, that's where a lot of American conservatism is. We don't need Jesus. We just need conservative values. And if everybody would just follow the 12 rules for life and get some conservative values and apply it to their households, we'd get cultural change. That's not the gospel. The gospel starts with repentance and faith in Christ Jesus so that his Holy Spirit is dwelling in you and bearing his fruit in your life. And that's where it starts. And from there, it spills over into all these other things. And we want all these other things, but not to the exclusion of the root. You don't get the tree without the root. So that's number one, the fruits of the Spirit. Number two, another way that Christians are called to bear fruit is in their vocation. I don't have this reference written down, so I know where I'm trying to go, but hopefully I can find it. Yes, okay. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. So number 2 is bearing fruit in our vocation. Luke chapter 3, we have the preaching of John the Baptist. He's preaching repentance. This is 3, 7, Luke 3, 7. So he began saying to the crowds who were going out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore, bear fruits in keeping with repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. Now note that line, bear fruits in keeping with repentance. For I say to you that from these stones, God is able to raise up children to Abraham. Indeed, the axe is already laid at the root of the trees. So every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Is God concerned about fruit? Yeah, very. He says, bear fruit or face judgment. Is this work salvation? No. No, the point is, if you're not bearing fruit, you're not actually a part of the root. You're not actually a part of the tree. Jesus does not save people and not change them. The Holy Spirit doesn't come and indwell us because he needs a place to hang out. That's not how it works. If we know Christ, we will bear fruit. If we are not bearing fruit, we should be scared. We should be thinking, what's going on? I don't want to be cut down and cast into the furnace. This is serious business. And the crowds were questioning him saying, then what shall we do? And he would answer and say to them, the man who has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And he who has food is to do likewise. And some tax collectors also came to be baptized. And they said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than you have been ordered to. Some soldiers were questioning him saying, and what about us? What shall we do? And he said to them, do not take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely and be content with your wages. Now, there's a bunch of different things you could talk about from this passage, but what I'm wanting to come here for is just to look at his address towards people relative to their vocation. He says, go do your vocation like, he wouldn't use this terminology at this point in church history, but like a Christian. Go be a soldier like a Christian. Go be a tax collector like a Christian. Bear fruit in your vocation. Well, notice the kind of fruit that he's telling them to bear. What is that? That's really fruits of the Spirit. That's really the kind of fruit that he's telling them to bear. Um, collect no more than what you have been ordered to. What is that? That's love. (coughs) Quit using your position to milk people for all their worth and steal them blind. Love them. Soldiers, uh, don't take money by force or accuse anyone falsely and be content with your wages. That's what? That's contentment, gratitude, joy, considering others more important than yourself. So in your vocation, whatever vocation God has given you, whatever your job is, that's an opportunity to bear fruit both by applying the fruits of the Spirit in our interactions with others, and also simply by being diligent and faithful and excellent in what we do. Because God made us 
and calls us to do certain things. Whatever it is he's called you to do, that's a way of bearing fruit. The faithful, the faithful plumber who fixes plumbing for the glory of God can do that, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, for the glory of God. That is a way of bearing fruit. You look at that and you say, wow, that was done with excellence. That was done with diligence. That was done with care for others. That's fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you're writing code and you're writing code in such a way that your clients know, I can go to that guy and he's really, he thinks about what I need. He makes sure that I'm taken care of. His code is, is well written. It does what I need it to do. That's bearing fruit in your vocation. If you are, if, um, I don't know, if you're a, a lifeguard, then what, what, what does a Christian lifeguard do? Christian lifeguard is concerned with making sure everybody's okay. He's not just there because, well, I guess this is my job. This is what I have to do. No, he wants to make sure people are okay. Just apply it to whatever. If you're a homemaker, then make, make the home beautiful. Because a beautiful home is a testament to the glory of God. Right? So all of our vocations are opportunities to love others and honor God through our vocation. Number three. In the church. In the church... We go to Romans chapter 12. Since we have, this is 12, 6, Romans 12, 6. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, or he, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness, and the list goes, it kind of gets a little more general, goes on down. Um, actually, I want to I look at verse 4. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. So we have a role to play in the church of Christ, and we should be bearing fruit in the church of Christ. So in order to do that, you have to figure out what your role is. And a lot of times that's just a matter of, doing what you feel the Lord laying on your heart, doing what you're naturally gifted to that blesses others. So you're bearing the fruits of the Spirit in your interaction with brothers and sisters in Christ. We're not just cogs. We're not just replaceable, switchable, aroundable individuals. We actually have a role. We actually have a purpose, like in a body. So am I bearing fruit in whatever gift God has given me to bless the church with? Okay, that's another area where Christians should be bearing fruit. And with, so these get practical, right? Each of these points is something for each of us. I can't tell you what yours is. I mean, some of them, it gets to a point where you can look at somebody and say, hey, I think this is, this is your, your calling where you're supposed to bear fruit in the church or whatever. Because you get to know them and you see them doing a certain thing. Like, I think you really are, you, you're really servant-hearted. I think that's the role you play in the church or whatever. You really help organize things. And that really fills a need in the church. But each of us needs to go before the Lord and say, okay, Lord, first of all, am I bearing fruits of the Spirit? Secondly, in these areas in my vocation, how can I be bearing, bearing fruit in my vocation? We have to make this practical for ourselves because I can't tell you the application. That's something for you to hear from the Lord. How can I bear fruit in the church? You can get wise counsel on these questions, but that's something for each of us to pursue in our walk with the Lord. Am I bearing fruit in this area? Number four would be in our communities. We should be bearing fruit in our communities. And I'd start with Matthew 28, 18 through 20 for that one, where Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. So the gospel is not something that's to be kept in a holy huddle, a Christian cloister. We can look back through history and see what God did through monks in their um, what, monasteries. And, and say, praise God for the workings of providence. I protected scripture. And there, it's not, we're not saying there's no place for Christians to devote their lives to study and, and whatever. But that's not the general Christian practice to just all huddle up and not do things in our communities. That's how we're called to. We're called to go and, and preach the gospel, make disciples of the nations. So are we bearing fruit in our communities? Do our communities know us? See us as those, oh, those are those Christian guys. And man, you can trust them. You call them up. At, we're kind of 
you got vocation and community kind of spilling over here, right? But you call them up to, to fix your toilet. Man, that guy's happy. He's on time. He's really nice to my kids. He's, that, there's vocationally. Or maybe it's not vocation. Maybe it's just that that's the Christian lady that comes and shops here every Friday. Man, she's just a bright spot in my Friday because everybody's all snippy and bad attitudes. And then she walks in and she's just, hi, how you doing? Is there anything I can pray for you? Whatever. How are we invested in our community. I'm blessed with living on a cul-de-sac with a bunch of seniors. And my goodness, it just blesses their souls seeing my children. That's an opportunity to get to love on my cul-de-sac, my little corner of the world. So I want to do that and I want to tie it to the name of Christ. Not just, oh, that's that nice family, but that's that Christian family. I guess this is what Jesus does, right? This is an opportunity to preach the gospel. So number four is our community. Number five is bearing fruit in the home. We talked about that with children last week. Is that the only way to bear fruit in the home? No. I I think a pretty solid biblical case can be made that it's the primary way of bearing fruit in the home is raising godly generations. We see that right there at the beginning in Genesis chapter one, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. That's starting with multiplication. As talking particularly about bearing children. But there are other ways. Look at Proverbs 31. The Proverbs 31 woman bears all sorts of fruit. She's making garments and selling them. She's buying fields. She's doing all sorts of stuff, filling out her role as a homemaker. She is very primarily a wife and mother. But that's bearing fruit in all sorts of different ways. It's not just this idea of like... Well, now that you're a wife and mother or a husband and father, all you ever do is just take care of your kids. No, we understand that is a high calling and one that we delight in, but not the extent of the fruit that a Christian can bear. It's something that I've been praying through and thinking about for myself. If It is a primary duty, right? So if I am failing at being a husband or father, then other stuff needs to be set aside so that I get that right. But that doesn't mean that God might not have other gifts that he's given me as well that he wants me to pursue. So I need to figure out how to balance that in a biblical way. And that's a calling for each of us in in a Christian household, specifically as husband and father, wife and mother. That's your first calling. That's your, if, if that's suffering, then you need to focus on that. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other areas of bearing fruit that we can look into and pursue if God is calling us to. So lastly, and number six would be simply this, don't waste your life, to quote John Piper's book title, awesome book, don't waste your life. When we talk about bearing fruit, we're talking about what the point is of being here. We did the catechism question, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. So don't waste your life. Wherever God has put you, whatever he's calling you to do, bear fruit there. The the fruitful life is not a wasted life. But the life that says, I am just kind of coasting, I'm having fun here and I'm, I'm doing the Christian thing, then you're running the risk of, of having a wasted life. If we are not talking to the Lord, growing in our relationship with Christ, bearing fruit where he puts us. So ask yourself about these, these points, these considerations. Am I bearing fruit in my walk with Christ on a spiritual level? Am I bearing the fruit of the Spirit in my vocation? Whatever that is. Am I doing my work like a Christian in my church? What role has God called me to fill? Am I filling that fruitfully in my community? Am I blessing the neighbors that I should be blessing? Am I preaching the gospel where I should be preaching the gospel? In my home, my household, am I being a fruitful husband, father, wife, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter? Am I bearing fruit like God calls me to in my loving leadership, my respectful submission, my honoring my father and mother, my loving my brothers and sisters? Am I bearing fruit? Even in the practical things of God has given me a flair for decorating and I could really bear fruit in, in my home by helping mom out, making the home look nice or whatever. Just, it's, it's very practical. God made you the way he made you to bear fruit in that way, whatever way that is. At the end of it all though, 
without stressing and overanalyzing, because God's grace is enough, we don't want to waste our lives. We want to come before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to bear fruit. And I want to bear fruit because your spirit is at work in me. So I'm not going to stress out. I'm not going to feel like I have to manufacture fruit. But I am going to yield myself to you. Set my desires aside because I want to be a fruitful tree in your garden, Lord. So show me, guide me. He says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And then run after him with a whole heart and bear fruit. Bear fruit for the glory of God. That's what we're here for. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it requires sacrifices. But that's what we're here for. And there is simply no better life than the life that is fully devoted to Christ.